What's up guys? So first off, I just want to say that I know a lot of you subscribed after watching my Telly Zelly video, and while I do make fun of people's bad decisions, I also review movies. So I'm sorry in advance if you thought I only make fun of people, but to be fair, that video most of you watched came out a month ago, and I've reviewed six movies since then. Unless all you guys subscribed after watching my latest Telly Zelly video, then yeah, I guess it does kind of look like I make fun of people, but I want to assure you, I am more than that. While I do tell jokes, I have the brain power of a college student, and if I try hard enough, you guys might just see it in action. But anyways, today's review is about the documentary Art and Craft, recommended to me by someone in the comments. And I already know what some of you are probably thinking. Really? An art movie, you fat bitch? And while I do appreciate the criticism, you don't have to call me a bitch, because just like my other videos, you won't be disappointed. Unless, in fact, you do think I only make fun of people, then 100% you will be disappointed. That's not to say I'm not going to make any jokes. Don't worry, if someone deserves to be made fun of, I'm going to do it. It's just not going to be the main focus of the video, alright? We good? We good. Alright, so this documentary is about this guy named Mark Landis, who spent 30 years recreating famous paintings from history and then giving them to museums as if they were the original. I have this sort of gimmick for, uh being able to remember something just long enough to get it onto paper. How does he do it? Find out next week on Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> just kidding, the movie starts out with Mark going to Hobby Lobby to pick up some new supplies for a painting he's about to do. This one isn't going to a museum though, instead it looks like it's going to a library? I don't know, I see books so I say library. Either way, I consider what he is doing to be a prank because well, whether or not it's a library or a museum, I still think his motives are the same. And you're probably wondering why I'm calling what he's doing a prank. Well, along with the fake paintings to make himself seem more credible, he lets people know that his dead sister gave him these paintings to donate. Only thing is, he doesn't have a dead sister... or a sister at all. That would be the, be the sister I made her up. Why did you make her up? Oh, well, I was in the habit of, of saying I had a sister so that I could throw awkward questions and problems in, in, their, in their lap. Say what you want about old people, but this dude is smart. He knows how to get your guard down, and then on top of that, he's gonna make you feel bad for someone that doesn't even exist. You're gonna be like, I'm so sorry for your loss, and then he's gonna look you straight in the eyes and be like, are you sure about that? Well, this was your sister? Yes. Uh, oh, my. No. You've got my phone number and everything. No, sir, you Are gave you... me no data. Oh. He's like, no, dude, all you did was tell me how and when your sister died. He knows damn well in that email he sent starting with, my recently deceased sister has no contact information. I thought it might have shown up. So now the movie switches things up, and they're now interviewing one of the guys Mark has given multiple fake paintings to. I've been following Landis for going on four years now. I've got old, older copies of my dossier in here. And at first glance, Matthew seems like the guy you're going to want to side with. His haircut's a little questionable, but his mission is basically just to get Mark to stop doing what he's doing to any other people. And yeah, you could say he's doing the right thing, but then you see just how obsessed with Mark he is. He likes to dupe museum professionals. He likes to see the stuff on display. I met him in 2008. I was registrar at the Oklahoma City Museum of Art. He showed up as Mark Landis and he started pulling all of these works out. This was the first piece that I had looked up online because we were getting ready to take this watercolor by Signac and make it part of the collection. But it wasn't until that I went on to this oil and panel by Stanislaus Lapine, I looked this one up and it showed up in a press release at the St. Louis University Museum of Art. He messed with the wrong registrar. Can you imagine being mad at someone for exposing how bad you are at your job? That's like going to the bank and depositing counterfeit money and they find out after you spend it all. Like. Okay, maybe do better at the one thing your job requires you to do. And what's even funnier is that these people are getting mad when Mark donates all his paintings and doesn't do any of what he's doing for money. What's so strange about Landis is that he's not in it for the money. So not only is he making you look like a dumbass who couldn't do the one task his job requires him to do, but he's doing it for free. This guy's a superhero, but instead of fighting crime, he makes people look like dumbasses. Here's another one. Put it in one of those Walmart frames. Looks like a million dollars. It does look like a million dollars, because that, cause actually that's worth about a million. Then after Mark lets us know that a trained art professional cannot tell the difference between a piece of wood from the 1800s and one that's had coffee spilled on it. You get better with practice, but that's how the the back's easy. You just pour coffee on it. Matthew lets us know that in that span of 30 years, Mark has donated over 100 paintings to 46 museums in 20 states. And he's been doing it over 30 years, and I've found 46 museums in 20 states. 
with more than 100 pieces that he's offered up to these institutions. I don't care how many views your prank has, I don't care how unique you think it is, the day you make 46 institutions that care for the collection of artifacts and other objects of artistic, cultural, historical, or scientific importance fail at their one job more than 100 times, then, and only then, can you call yourself a prankster. Like, dog, if Mark were to sell all those paintings that he donated, he could have made around $5 million. That just shows you how much of a failure these guys are. Like, their one and only job is to make sure the art they get is real, and the one rare time where someone puts their skills to the test, they fail horribly. Like, my boy Mark out here outsmarting the whole art community with some colored pencils and a printer. The Sotheby's label would have said black chalk brown. You know how those things, black chalk brown wash, red chalk. I just use color pencils. You know, because I can't tell. Anyways though, after another lady lets us know that she was too stupid to even realize that a Charlie Brown drawing he gave her was fake. I have felt totally embarrassed. We can't show that as an authentic Charles Schultz. We meet Aaron Cohen, who is not as obsessed with Mark as Matthew is, but he's just as annoying. It made me very curious to understand more what his motivation is. What don't these people get? His motivation is seeing dumbasses like you not know the difference between something that's a hundred years old and something that was printed and then glued onto a piece of wood. I would use this to, to blow it up 154 times so that I could paste it onto a piece of wood. Then he calls up Mark expecting to hear something other than you're a dumbass. I'd like to ask you some questions about, uh, about what makes you uh, compelled to do this. It's, it's a long story, it's hard to, you know, and, and I know, you know, I know you, we both, I mean, well, you know, it's a long story. I think Mark is either high as fuck or he's about to die because even I didn't know where he was going with that. You know, and, and I know, you know, I know you, we both, I mean, well, you know. But like people in the art community are so complicated. Like, here's the question, here's the answer. Instead of getting it the simple way, they're gonna be like, I'm gonna do it like this. Like, chill, dude. If they were your paintings, then yeah, I'd be asking questions. But you're probably just mad you didn't come up with that idea. Do you have any idea why at this point you haven't been prosecuted? Because I, I didn't do anything wrong or illegal. Imagine trying to make an old man feel bad because you're a failure at life. Like, if I was an NFL wide receiver and realized that it was the gloves that made me good and not my actual hands, I'd be calling people too and wanting answers. Now we go back to Matthew and he shows us just how much of an obsession with Mark he really has. As we see him watching a clip of himself on the local news back from when he first found out about Mark's fake paintings. Saddled with bogus works of art. What I did was looked up this piece online. I found the same one at the Savannah College of Art and Design. But that's not all. He even shows us that he got his daughter to recognize Mark like a family friend. Look at this. Who's that? Mark Landis. Yeah, Mark Landis, that's right. You crazy? Uh, am I crazy? Dog, does she even know your name? Like, I've seen enough movies to know if you get your daughter in on your bullshit, it doesn't matter if Mark paints using his own shit. You're gonna be the crazy one. Am I crazy? <laughs> I can only imagine how much he's holding back for the cameras. I could just imagine when they're not there, she's like, Daddy, can we go outside and play? And he's like, shut up, bitch. I'm trying to find Mark Landis. Then because having your daughter call you crazy because of your unhealthy obsession with a man who bamboozled you wasn't enough, he lets us know why he doesn't have a job anymore. They told me that while I am working for their museum, I am not to accept phone calls, send or receive emails, uh, regarding Landis, period. You do it on your own. And soon after that, they let me know I didn't have a job anymore. But you can see every state, California. Can someone knock some sense into this retard? Right at, literally right after telling us how he lost his job, he goes right into talking about the thing that made him lose his job. And soon after that, they let me know I didn't have a job anymore. But you can see every state, California. Anyways, to end it off, apparently Aaron, who I thought was just an asshole, is somewhat of a good guy, and he lets Mark know that he wants to put on an exhibit with all of his paintings. So how do you feel about uh, there being an exhibition? Uh, well, I, I... I think that's very nice of you. It's... Uh, uh... So Mark packs up all his paintings and sends them to Aaron, because you know the old saying, if you can't beat him, 
put their art that made you look like a dumbass up on display for everyone to see. And just when you thought you'd seen the last of him, Aaron thinks it's a good idea for Matthew and Mark to meet, but since Mark is so old, he probably forgot where he is, and doesn't even care about Matthew, and walks right past him. Well, I had the good fortune of seeing photographs well, of yeah, you beforehand. Uh, uh, Mr. Landis? Uh, uh, you might be interested to meet this gentleman. And you would think with the amount of obsession Matthew puts into his work, he would have had at least one interaction other than being given a fake painting by Matthew. Well... That's it. We, I couldn't have talked to you for very long. It couldn't have been more than a few minutes. Yep, they talk for about as long as you talk to the person at the drive-thru when you order your food. And to make himself even look like more of an asshole, all he does is follow Mark around looking like he's ready to kick his ass. Our true representations of what Def the artist's intent? Definitely not, because there's no telling what the real colors are like. Yeah. Hey, how are you? You look like an artist. I'm an artist. I'm the dean of the college here. Bro, what are you and your special ed haircut gonna do? Beat up a 90-year-old man in front of everybody? Just look at his body language. He is praying that this old man who can barely hold a paintbrush take a swing at him just so he has an excuse to hit him. Tell me that ain't the most pussy shit you've ever seen. Like, Matthew, here's some advice. Go to your local Cincinnati dispensary, pick up some wedding cake. No, not that kind. You'll know when you get there. Go back home, wait for your daughter to fall asleep, or don't. I don't want to tell you how to raise your kids. Smoke a blunt to the dome, and trust me, after that, you'll be the one making paintings, dude. Anyways, guys, that's it. Again, I'm sorry if this wasn't the kind of video you wanted, but just like anal, you'll eventually get used to it. Until next time, peace. I'll only hit the stuff just before I face whatever it is at the place, okay? Not when I'm driving. <laughs> Present for a fact, baby. Reynolds rap on the grass in the sack.